Check, check. <laughs> check. Yeah, I think good, but say some joke. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I will show you check. flash card. Check. Okay. Yeah. Test. Um, I will show you flash card. Okay, we're going to get started. Well, hello everyone in last presentation today in this uh, room. Um, here's a free poster. Do you want that? Do you want that, somebody? And here's some sticker. Sticker? <laughs> no? Okay. Um, uh, don't forget, after this presentation will be a uh, uh, other presentation in the 105 and you can win something there and now please welcome Vishwanath Bhatt and his test automation using this stuff. Hi. Uh, <laughs> I, I know this is the last session so I'm not going to take long. Uh, probably I'll complete it within 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, my name is Vishwanath Bhatt. I work in Red Hat as a uh, quality engineer in uh, Glassdoor storage team. And uh, my responsibility is mostly on the automation side. So uh, I'll be talking about this stuff. Uh, this is my agenda. I will be going through overview and then what actually led us to uh, come up with the framework and the, uh, the solution and writing tests and then how we did uh, CI with it and what's in the pipeline next. Okay, so this staff stands for Distributed Systems Test Automation Framework. Uh, but actually, uh, this staff with a double, double F in English also means some tool uh, uh, that's used for uh, spinning clothes. It actually makes your work very easier. So, uh, uh, but that's not what we came up with, but then that's also one of the things we named it this staff. So it's a, it's a lightweight test framework written in Python. It's uh, very modular. So uh, we actually uh, re rewrote a couple of uh, parts without actually changing the test cases or anything. So uh, it's very modular. And uh, we use uh, all the existing frameworks like uh, unit test or, uh, and RPC. And we, we, I mean, it's not we didn't write anything new from the scratch. We made use of all the existing Python modules uh, to write this. Um, so, and we were using Beaker B framework for our test automation in Gluster. So we, and one of the reason we had to write this was the, our frustration with that framework, Beaker B. So, uh, 
and as i said we were using beaker b framework before so uh, it was really very hard for people to it's beaker beaker is a fedora project it's an open source fedora project so uh, that's what we were using so it, the programming paradigm there is it was very hard so uh, we had i mean especially when using uh, a distributed systems i mean it's it's pretty straightforward if you if you have a single system uh, project but glasrfs being a distributed system it was really hard and uh, we had l very difficulty in getting people on board i mean uh, most qe folks uh, if they are not really uh, very much into programming then it's very hard for them to getting on board with uh, bigger b because uh, it's, it's not very forward i mean you write the, the in in bigger b like things uh, right i mean things get executed in parallel in multiple machines and there is no very straightforward connection you have to do sync set and a lot of issues with that so people were taking very long time to learn and then writing and debugging test cases was very very difficult it was really painful and there was a couple of uh, issues such as you know uh, there is no very simple way of uh, communicating with other machines you have to do ssh and then write to some file and then other nodes should read some file it was painful again and uh, that framework was very much tied to anything with rpms so uh, we couldn't use it with debian ubuntu i mean in upstream i mean we, we had a lot of upstream uh, uh, customers using ubuntu and debian so we wanted a, a uniform test framework for upstream and downstream as well so we came up with distaff so it solves uh, most of the most of the issues that's if not all most of the issues uh, that's uh, beaker used to have and uh, so in here we we have kept the framework and the infrastructure management as separate uh, you can use i mean to provision machines you can use anything you can use open open stack or xspace or your own vagrant or even uh beaker itself but uh the test framework once the machines are your uh, test machines are provisions so uh you can use distaff for that and uh distaff by itself doesn't do anything much so it just gives you a small test uh, test runner and then provides a couple of apis for you to run the tests or orchestrate, orchestrate how your test should go in the remote machines i think that will be clear when i go to the architecture diagram so uh the dotted line do dotted box here that's the uh distaff so uh it can distaff this whole of that thing runs on a single machine so uh so we are we are just trying to we are not solving the problem of distributed system here so we are just trying to solve the problem of uh testing distributed system so it's okay to have a, a single management node so uh this is our management node where it stuff runs and uh, the machine one to machine and that's our test machine uh, and th they can be a, a physical machines or uh, vms or even a container all all that needs is uh, sshd should be running in all those uh, we all those machines and there should be a passwordless ssh setup between the management node and your uh, test machine and it's a uh, uh, it's it's a logical uh, nodes i mean this stuff can also management node can also present in one of those test machines as well uh so he, this is how the uh, flow works so you have a config file where you specify this is my uh, server configuration and this is my servers and these are my clients and the config parser reads it when the when you start this stuff the config parser reads the config file and connection manager establishes a a connection to all those uh, it's, it basically uses ssh tunneling inside so um, so we establish a connection to all those uh, remote machines and then manage it uh, connection is made only once and all the tests are run all commands remote commands are run through that connection and then it's the connection is taken down at the end of the test run so uh, once the connection manager co connection is establishes connection is established all your test cases and your all your libraries sh should talk to remote machines through one of those uh, um apis provided by the connection manager and we have a way to uh, 
discover test discover test discovery so i will come to that bit later okay so uh, writing test cases is uh, writing test cases is very easy i mean uh, what what we had in mind was making uh, automation write test case automation very simpler so so eventually uh, what we came up with is like uh, test cases are written in steps like steps i mean step 1 do this in this machine do this in this machine so so with this stuff you can just write whatever is written in english you can just write them in python and you you need not be an expert in python i mean it's very basic so uh, the the uh, i mean onboarding process is very easy i mean all you have to know is very basic python that's all so connection manager once uh, established i mean uh, after after the uh, connection establishment it it gives you a couple of apis and couple of uh, variables uh, through which you can actually uh, access all your servers all your nodes um, and there's a uh, there's a that's agentless connection in the sense um, only sshd should be running so no disturb doesn't run any program by itself on the remote machines but you need to have sshd running and uh, so at least in, in in case of cluster most of our most of the commands that we wanted to run on the servers are basically bash commands bash or shell commands so uh, Disturb gives you two APIs uh, with, through which you can actually run all your bash commands synchronously or asynchronously. And then, uh, if if you want to if you want to run anything uh, uh, Python commands on the remote machines, you can request for a connection, and all the uh, Python operation that you do on that particular connection runs on that particular remote node through which you uh, requested the connection with. Suppose, like, if you want to do uh, open a file and read a file in the remote node, you have to get a connection to that node, and all the open and Python open and read write that you do will be on the remote machine. Yeah, so uh, so that's how we make the discovery. So I mean, test discovery. So all your test cases should have a decorator called at test case with the test case name. So uh, when this stuff go goes through your uh, test test list or te test source code, it, it reads all the uh, decorator and puts them in a list and then runs them one by one. You, you can actually control the control what, what should run, what should not run in uh, by giving a, uh, CLI options. Okay, so I have a, <coughs> I have a sample test case code. Uh, so if you see from this stuff util import tc so tc is my global connection object through which you can access all your servers all your clients and it, it provides a lot of apis with which, with which you can run commands on the remote node and uh, so that's my so when when there is a for, okay so um, the test case uh, can be either a class or a function it doesn't matter but then if it is a class it should have uh, the methods uh, set up uh, run and tear down so uh, and uh, so you you write you, you specify the uh, test cases in that uh, test case at test case decorator so everything at all python functions or classes that has particular decorator is considered as a test case and uh, if if you see in in the doc string i have i have two uh, two values i mean key value pair and that's basically written in uh, yaml format so what we do is like uh, we i read the doc we read the doc string and then uh, pass the yaml format in it and we get the dictionary so we make a couple of decisions based on that particular uh, uh, particular value so suppose like uh, reuse setup so if your test case wants to uh, set up a fresh setup then you can make it uh, reuse setup false which means like the setup will not be run and directly you can go to the run part of the your class if you have a class <coughs> and you can actually have this is not implemented yet the tags so the 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 plan is to like uh, uh, have 
tags for a particular test case. I mean, this is my regression case, this is my longevity case, or this is a priority zero case. So while running, you can specify run all the cases that has this particular tag. And, yeah. so, uh, so you have access to your servers and clients with the dot nodes, dot clients variables, the Python list. So, uh, and uh, yeah, I have just explained, I mean, I have just, this is a dummy test here, so uh, I have written, I have explained, I mean, three basic APIs that are provided by this app. One is dot run, this is dot run, and run async. So both are used to run uh, uh, any bash or shell commands in the remote node. So that uh, tc.run takes two arguments, the, the server in which uh, you want to run any command or and the, uh, the command itself. And it returns you uh, three, a tuple, Python tuple basically, so that's one is return code, the uh, std out and std error. So if you want to do any, you know, negative test case, negative case where you want to uh, parse the std error and then check something that you can use, the, you can use the uh, third std error. So I'm just running some uh, NTPD start, and then I'm running, I mean, using this find command in the client, I'm, uh, I'm renaming all the files that's in the mount point, and if run async gives you a uh, object, which is basically inside a, a Python subprocess object, so with which you can do wait, kill, return code, or anything that uh, Python subprocess can do. And, uh, so while that, that is running in the client, I am I can do anything uh, on the server. So this is just an example. So I'm getting a connection to the server as a root, and then I'm just running uh, get host name. So this connection, uh, so all your commands, so uh, Python commands, if, if, it, if it is a, a built-in like open read write, you should specify connection dot built-in dot open a file or read, something like that. If it's a, uh, if it depends, depends on a remote module, like here, socket, it's connection dot modules dot your module. If you if you are uh, if you want to write a uh, if you want to make use of a non-standard Python module in the remote machines, you should make sure that this particular module is installed in in the machine that you get connection from. Question, yeah. Uh, the TC logger. Yeah. Yes, there, there's a typo. Okay. Yes, so bye. So I have a You were saying server and client gives you because you uh, are interested in cluster and there you have this concept of server and yes. client. Yes. I mean, if I don't have, if I'm a distributed system where there are no servers and client, but just yours, I can still use your thing. Yes, but then. Um, I can declare all of them as clients or servers. Yes, yeah. Is there anything special about servers and clients? Like. They are, they, they, no, they are just. Uh, I mean, I'm writing, I'm using this for cluster, so there is a differentiation, but then the, right. yeah, there so is no. All the methods available to a server instance yes. are there. Yes, yes, okay. exactly. So it's just, it's just a connection manager which uh, once connection is established, you can run, it's exactly the same methods that is available for both servers and clients. It's just an easy way for you to. Yes. Yeah. I mean, in, in our case, servers is why cluster is inside client, is client, so okay. that's all. <coughs> Yeah. So uh, yeah. So after I mean after I get the uh, host name, I I am actually waiting for the, all the renames to complete uh, with the wait method, and I after the, uh, I want to actually check the output of that. So I have uh, dot value written. Um, that's one of the things that, that uh, that's written on top, other than what uh, Python subprocess gives you. So again, that gives you the same output as the run, so, uh, return code, std out and std error. And, one, and then you have to close the connection there. So as you can see, so uh, writing test cases was pretty simple. I mean, you have uh, cases written in English, so you just have to convert them to Python, that's all. Mostly, not, not always. Running test, so uh, so you have to specify uh, the, your servers. So we have the servers and clients, so you can actually omit one of them, in which case that will be a empty list. So uh, 
but either servers or client should be there. But if you change the config parser, you can right, have your own keyword. So, uh, so in a, we specify all the uh, servers and clients or, and all my configuration values in a YAML file, and then I set up a passwordless SSH to those machines. Uh, and if you, if you have a lot of machines, a uh, lot of test machines, then it can be a bit harder. So there is a uh, script that basically makes use of uh, bash expect package to uh, set up set that up. But then you have to have all your remote uh, machines uh, password same. And then we uh, <coughs> we have uh, currently we have options to uh, run all the cases or uh, all the cases inside a particular directory in your te test case source code, or uh, everything from a file, or just a test case list of test cases. Uh, there are, we want to have a couple of uh, improvements on there. And the results are either in text format or they're in a JUnit style format. You can, that again can be specified through a command line. So JUnit style can be uh, rendered by Jenkins friendly and it can show a pretty output on the Jenkins side project. So CI, uh, so th this is, uh, we are using this mainly for Gluster so far, and a uh, couple of the recent changes that went in are very Gluster specific. Uh, <coughs> so in here, in Gluster we are making actually, we have two options, both are work in progress. So uh, one of them is we are making use of CentOS infra setup for CI. Uh, in CentOS, they have a, uh, a, a program called Duffy with which you can actually request all CentOS machines with a couple of options. So we make use of, the plan is to make use of that and we have like halfway through that. Uh, once you get the machines, it, it gives you host names of your server, I mean whatever the machines that you ask for. Once you get that, you populate them in the uh, YAML file programmatically and then uh, start the cases that you want to run. So in, in this case, Jenkins Slave acts as your list of management node, and the test machines are res, I mean, reserved through CentOS Infra. So in the other setup, other setup also work in progress, but it's mostly ex more or less similar, except that we request or we provision all the uh, test machines through Vagrant with libword, I mean, uh, instead of uh, instead of Duffy. So we, you can actually make use of uh, Rackspace or OpenStack or in, uh, in internally we use Beaker as well. Okay, so what we have in plan, so uh, if we, we have a couple of very basic test cases that doesn't require any you know, uh, stress or anything, we can actually make use of containers, in which case we want to make use of uh, Vagrant with LXE plugin. And uh, as I said, we, we, uh, we want to have a couple of options with uh, tags and then skipping it or uh, running only those, I mean, uh, those cases which have particular tags. And uh, currently the results are only in uh, uh, either text or JSON, uh, sorry, JUnit. So uh, we want to have a couple of more options there as well. Yeah, that's all. So. If you have any questions. I have one. Okay. How do the nodes find each other in the test case? Like, uh, <coughs> if I want to make a connection from the, a client to the server, then how do I tell the client where to connect? Because so, the server's name changes every time, right? It could change because it's just server zero, server one, whatever. Yeah. So. No, I didn't understand. Get your question. This Python code is running. Mm -hmm. On the connection manager. Yes. So the connection manager knows that server zero is, I don't know, has some host name or mm -hmm. client yeah. zero has yeah. some host name. But it has to tell client zero that now connect, make a connection to the. So the oh, server. okay. Oh. Okay, so uh, the servers and clients, at least distrust doesn't connect servers and clients by itself. So client itself doesn't know anything. Right, the client itself doesn't know anything. Yeah. So, the, the, so this has to tell it. Yeah, you have to get the you have to get the receive the uh, whatever you want to do it through client and then tell it to the server through the management what node. I mean is, for example, in Beaker, I think every machine, if you set up a multi yeah. test, then I, I think every machine gets the array of all machines participating in the test. Yes. 
so then they can they, they can talk to each other because I mean that's who, that's the point of the distributed system, thing, right? So yes, but then uh, it's not very straightforward. I mean, uh, even in multi-host, they they each 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 uh, machine knows what are other machines in the cluster, but then it it cannot talk to simply it has to use SSH and then all those things. So in here, the, the servers itself and clients itself are dumb. So they don't know anything what other, uh, what server doesn't know how many uh, servers are there in our client. But when a client has to detect, <coughs> like uh, there's a cluster FS running on one of the servers and now you are desk requires the client to connect to this cluster FS. Yeah. So it needs a host name. How does yeah. it get that? That's the question. Oh, that's, I, I pass it through uh, management node. Uh, management node knows these are my servers. So in, okay. I, I tell, client to mount it through this host name. I, I can pass it. The management note notes everything, so it can pass around all the information that it like. But there is no direct communication between the servers and clients. Well, uh, we don't have anything in the plans at least, but uh, yeah, if it makes sense, but then as, as I said, like we came up with this because of all the frustration that we had with multi-host beaker environment. Uh, and at that time we did research, I mean, we did look into a couple of others, but then that wasn't, I mean, I can't tell all of them. I don't even remember all of them on top of my head, but then, uh, we had a lot of issues with, I mean, one or other issues with many of them. Like in, in here, like we want it to be uh, connect to Windows for Samba testing. Uh, we we do that through running OpenSSH uh, or FreeSSH in the uh, Windows and then connecting via, I mean, using make use, making use of PowerShell. Uh, so each of the test case, uh, test framework that we looked into had either one of one or other, uh, you know shortcomings, so uh, we had to come up with this, but then at least now we don't have any, it's been, I mean, it, at least it's, it's been working good so far for us, so we have, we have no plans of migrating, but then if, that, if there is a lot of issues with this as well, then yeah, probably, yeah. Because actually we're working with Avocado now, and it's working yeah. right then, it's I, I I have heard of I came to know about Avocado after this, but then as I said, nothing in the plans. Okay, so I would like to ask regarding the configuration of the tests. Uh, so you yeah. No, so uh, there is global YAML file uh, that has your environment information, like these are my servers, clients, and then uh, this is my log file, log level, and all those things. And uh, since we use cluster, we have a lot of options to specify the volume configuration in cluster as well. But uh, <coughs> each test case can have its own uh, configurations that you can specify in the YAML format in the doc string there. So before running a test case, we actually at the beginning of running all the tests, we read the doc string and then we uh, parse it YAML, I mean parse it through YAML and then make decisions couple of, based on that. So, uh, but then again, we have very few options. I mean like we, right now we have only three options and those are all cluster specific because the test case is written for cluster. Uh, but then you actually can make use of, I mean write your own, uh, uh, fields in the YAML format and then make decisions on that. But then you'll have to write that config parser part for that. Whatever it is written, you have to have a config, I mean you have to parse it and read it and make decisions based on that. There is no uh, YAML file separate for a test case. That's the one for particular one, that particular case. I mean it, it doesn't, I mean it makes sense to have 
the test case and its related metadata together. I mean, it's related information in the same file at the same place. I didn't understand what? In the CA workflow, we have like provision that has been here already. Ah, okay. Uh, Is it going to be fitting at that? Run, run test. Yeah. So, provisioning and tear down, you can use anything you, you, you like. It's not tied to particular. Yeah, I mean, but then you have to have test cases for that. But but yeah, I mean, you can. Run. But it, this step doesn't take care of any package installations and everything. You have to, if you want to do that, you have to write that module or functions or what, whatever to do that in in this stuff yourself. Right now, it doesn't do any package installation. That's all kept separate. So you can use anything. You can use Ansible. You can use whatever you, you want to uh, install the packages and softwares. Yeah, just the test case. Just the test case. Test case is in this stuff. No questions? Great. Thank you. Thanks for coming. <laughs>